can do battle. And that the Lord can take care of Egypt that's behind you. Glory to God. Oh, you may be seated if you can. We thank God for the Spirit of the Lord. God is good, isn't He? All the time. We're thankful for each and every one of you that made your way out to the house of the Lord today. You are dear to us. You are very special to our heart. We're so thankful to have ministry here today. Evangelist Jill, we're so glad to have you in the house of the Lord today. Glad that God has kept his hand on you and watched over you and protected you. Amen. He's a good God, isn't he? How many knows that the Lord loves each and every one of us? We're glad that you're here this morning, Brother Tex. We miss your daughter, Paula, but the Lord's going to fight her battle. What you shared with me was just a little bit. I don't know all the detail, but God's going to do the battle for her. How many of you have found yourself in a conflict or battle? How many believe that the Lord can do battle for you? Amen. If we would learn to hold our peace and let God fight our battle, oh, how blessed we would be. My wife and I <clears throat> remember an old black spiritual when we were on the evangelistic field and I remember the lady that sang it and it was about holding your peace if we would only hold our peace then God would fight our battle he's a good God isn't he Missy we're so glad to see you and your husband and your son and Tom, good to see you back in the house of the Lord. And uh, good to see you encouraged in the Lord. Gene, good to see you. Linda, knowing that you're battling cancer and that you are winning. Every service you come. We know that you're wearing a, a cap and we respect what you are going through. Because what you go through, the body of Christ feels it. And you are forever in our prayers. And we're declaring your healing. She is in the presence of the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. There is healing in the house of the Lord. Good to see you with a smile. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. How is your grandmother? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's in the valley of decision, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Good to see you with so many children today. And we have a special class for them today. Sister Amy's going to be taking care of that class. And Bree, just believe God. Believe God. Amen. God has got Mother Claiborne in his hands. And we know that God is a healer. Believe God for all of your family. Your family is in great warfare. Some of uh, your family by marriage is in great warfare. If you will really believe God today... There's one in your family that's thinking about taking his life. You know I'm telling the truth. And you know that kind of runs in that family. But it can stop. It can stop with him. I, I, I'm angry at the enemy trying to destroy life before it's time. Come on now. How many knows that God is far greater? Far, far greater. Hallelujah. Softly play for me. God is good. Hallelujah. How many knows God is good? All the time. All the time. Evangelist Jill is going to be ministering to us in song this morning. And we're so glad that she has come and willing to minister to us in song. 
God is so good. Grace Fellowship, I'm going to ask you to remember your local church right now with a tithe and with an offering. You are so weary in your walk and you're so tired in your mind that even if you were to walk with the Lord to the highest mountain, you would fall asleep on him after you got there. But be not afraid. God is still greater than your slumber, greater than your weariness, greater than your tiredness. God will revive you. God will strengthen you when you are physically and mentally wore out. God will help you when nobody else can help you. Jesus led Peter, James, and John to a very high mountain. And it's been recorded three times in the Word. And Luke said that after they got to the top of the mountain, that Peter, James, and John fell asleep on the Lord. But the Lord, there was no sleep for him, for he was transfigured. For your benefit and for my benefit. How many knows that his garments began to take on a look that they didn't have before? And his face began to glow like it didn't glow before. But when you're with the Lord, the Lord will appear at that moment just what you need. And he will declare his word unto thee and bring you into the cloud. The Lord knew exactly who was going to be here this morning, and the Lord knows exactly how to minister. How many of you are in a race? If you're in the Lord, you are. Come on now. How many are running for your life? I got a phone call last night from Marysville from a minister, Brother Keith Roshan, and he invited me this evening to Marysville, to the ministry called Running for My Life. And I thought, my, that's catchy. And I thought to myself, that's unusual that he called me. And I, and I know uh, Evangelist Adele Gray had ministered there not long ago, and I, I believe Keith and Teresa weren't there, but we, we heard about what a wonderful service that was in Marysville and I didn't really commit myself to brother Keith because I'm gonna be frank with you and very honest with you I don't go like I used to go I kinda of take my time I was invited last night to a Baptist church in Columbus wait raise your hand Tom didn't you invite me you were gonna take me weren't you I didn't go, did I? Amen. I get it. I get a lot of invite, but I don't do a whole lot of going. I'm just being frank with you. Pastor Moore used to go at the drop of a hat. Why, I could beat the helicopter to the emergency room, and I'm not lying. I'd get the phone call and I'd be pulling in and the helicopter would be landing because I was one of the fastest pastors in town. <laughs> Amen. When they saw me, they come, oh, there comes that. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you don't watch cartoons, do you? Especially the ones back in the 50s. Amen. I got to the emergency room at Children's Hospital, and one of the, I don't know what you call them, interns or doctors said, oh, that's Pastor Moore. Let him in. A lot of times they would just let me. I, I've been invited in the operating room. Come on, somebody. I haven't rode on the helicopter yet. Come on. But used to, my wife and I, we would go and go and go. I don't know if something has happened with our go year or not. But uh, the Lord still has his hand on me. He said, I'm going to bring them. He said, I'm going to bring children of faith to you wearing golds of crown. And they're going to deal with you bountifully. 
He said, I've seen you're gone, but I'm going to bring them. There's going to be a revival in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. How many of you are in a race? Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 1. Wherefore, seeing, somebody say seeing. Mm -hmm. We need some good seeing with an I-N-G. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed or surrounded about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Many believers. The Lord is going to surround me with strong believers. Not weak believers, but strong believers. Believers with experience. Believers that have already been crowned. You know, some people are waiting to be crowned. The Lord spoke to my heart and he said, if your eyes could be open and if the veil could be lifted, I could show you some of my children right now that are already wearing their crown. Already wearing it. I've seen it in a vision. Gold crowns. Crowns of victory. Oh, I know that's a kind of a new revelation. Amen. But there's some folks right now in the spirit realm that are wearing their badge of authority. And the demonic world knows it. I don't have to wait to be crowned. And I don't have to wait to sit down in the throne with the great I am. He's already allowed me. I've seen his throne come into a few of the services that I've been privileged to preach. And when it came in, I heard the sound of it coming in. And when his throne came in, there was righteousness and judgment and order. And there was deliverance. And every demonic force had to bow the knee and crawl out. Come on, somebody. God has a portable throne. The world has tried to copy that. Pharaoh would have his throne carried on the shoulders of strong soldiers to carry him from one city to the other. The Pope would hire the strongest guards there were to shoulder his throne to carry him from one place to another place. They don't have anything on God. God has a throne that has wheels. And they wonder how it's powered. God has a throne that is portable, on the move. You think God has to be stationary. He rides the clouds. He can come into any service he wants. Can't he? And when his throne comes in, court's in session. Woo! You know, that's the only thing that demonics respect is when God is in court. That's why the children of God can get anointed and begin to command and unclean spirits bow and leave. When God comes in, the enemy has to bow. Did not the Bible say every knee shall bow? Every tongue shall confess. That he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. There's some ministers in here this morning, and really, we, we were going to just have a, a gospel sing fest. And I told Evangelist Jill, I said, usually when I schedule something, that's the way it stays. She said, Pastor Moore, you're the pastor. She said, if you tell me to sing one song, I'll sing one. Come on. She said, you're the pastor. She showed respect. She shows and she has showed respect to the pulpit. And I thank God for that. Some of you that are in a race are carrying too much weight. And some of you are harboring sin. And you can't effectively run a race. 
carrying weight and carrying sin. Even the champions that are good at physical races will tell you that it's not just good to be physically fit for the race. You've got to be mentally fit. You can't run a race if you're carrying a lot of trouble up here. For as a man thinketh, and a woman too, so are they. You can't effectively preach when you carry too much up here. You have got to know how. Come on, and it, sometimes it takes years. But you've got to know how to lay some things down when you get to the pulpit. For the only thing that matters in the pulpit is thus saith the Lord. If a man or woman sings and preach, they ought to speak the oracle of work, the oracle of God, which is the word of God. And if you're not reading it, you should be quoting it. You should be speaking it with unction. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Amen. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about so with so great a cloud of witnesses. And I'm going to back up in chapter 11 and show you the cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Did you notice he said, let us? Whoever the writer is of the book of Hebrews included himself. Now I feel like it was Paul because Timothy is mentioned in this book. But Paul doesn't talk about himself in this book. Do you know some books are so anointed and some sermons are so anointed, uh, you have to check and find out who's doing the preaching. Because the message is not about us. That's why Bible scholars are all upset trying to figure out who wrote the book of Hebrews. And some of them, some people are always trying to figure out who preached that. Wouldn't it be nice if we would just accept it as a word from God? Wouldn't that be nice? Anybody getting fed yet? <laughs> God's a good God, isn't he? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. You know, there are some sins that keep showing up. In the believer's life. Because they just don't want to be without you. And there's a lot of sins that are just at the door. Didn't God tell Cain one time, why is your countenance fallen? Why are you sad? If you do well, everything will be all right. But if you don't, sin's at the door. Yes. Did you know sin's always at the door? Yes. Always trying to come in. That's why the Bible said, give no place to the who? He's the author of sin. Amen. I am sin free. Glory to God. I said, I'm sin free. I'm free from my past. I'm free from my present. I feel so anointed that I'm free concerning my future. Seeing you might have had a chance at me in the past, but there's no hope for you tomorrow. Yeah. Somebody give the Lord a clap offering, amen. I've got the victory over it only because of Christ. Yeah. And when he says in here, and the sin which does so easily beset us, yeah. us, the writers including himself, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. There is a race before us. What are we supposed to do with the weight and the sin? Lay it aside. Why on the side? So it will be out of your way. When you take the weight off, don't lay it down in front of you. Jesus didn't do that when he came out of the tomb. The grave clothes. He picked the napkin up that was about his face, folded it, 
and laid it aside by itself. We need to lay down the things, mm, get quiet on me if you will. We need to lay weight down. We need to lay sin down. We need to fold them up once and for all. Lay it aside and walk out. Yeah. Walk out. What was he doing? He was laying his past. Fold it up aside. When the women entered into the sepulcher after the stone was rolled away, when they went in, it was a 10 by 7 room and then there was two slabs over on this side. It said the angel was on the right. When you walk into the tomb, you've got to make a right. And the angel says, look where they laid him. That's where he was laid. You know, sin will always lay you out. Fold you up. Come on, somebody. Sin will always make you a burden to somebody. How many knows that when he became sin, he was a burden to somebody? Somebody had to pull the nails out. Somebody had to pull the thorns out. Somebody had to carry him to his tomb. Somebody had to wrap him up. Somebody had to wash him. He couldn't do for himself. And when you're really in sin, you can't do for yourself. You're a burden to others. And I've heard people say, I don't want to be a burden to nobody. Then walk away from sin. Yeah. Give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. My Lord. We need some resurrection power. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take the grave clothes and lay them aside. Yeah. Take the weight and lay it aside. Take the sin and lay it aside. So you can run. Woo! When Jesus came out of that tomb, he didn't trip over grave clothes. Anybody ever see that movie called The Passion by Mel Gibson? Did you ever catch the last part when a little bit of light came in the tomb and you could hear the rock rolling away? And you could see this man standing up. He was naked. How many knows the Lord was naked? He wouldn't worry about no clothes. Come on, somebody. He wasn't, wear, he wasn't gonna wear the grave clothes outside the tomb. God had a new robe for him. Amen. The time Jesus walked out of that tomb, he was dressed. Come on, somebody. Somebody thought he was a gardener. If he had been naked, they would not have thought that he was the gardener. I don't know what kind of clothes he had on, but she thought he was the gardener. Come on, somebody. If some of you would lay aside what you have wore in the past, God's got a new robe for you. God's got a garment of righteousness. He'll dress you. Oh, I love it when the Holy Ghost dresses us. Esther said, I've already determined in my mind I'm not choosing the gown that I'm wearing when I go in under the king. I'm going to let somebody that knows something about it choose my clothes. And she was chosen because she didn't choose what she wore. You will be chosen if you let God do the choosing. Woo, pastor's preaching. How do you run the race? You run it with patience. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's it, faith. We began this race with faith and we're going to end it with with faith. There's no way around it. It's faith from the beginning. It's faith at the end. Amen? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's the author of my faith. He's the finisher of my faith. In other words, he's going to see me through with my faith. He gave me faith. I have a measure of faith. And at times I feel the gift of faith. I have so much faith this morning that the enemy is literally afraid. Now faith. I have a through faith. I have a by 
my faith. Woo! Glory, glory. I feel the anointing that you felt up here. I have a now faith. I have a through faith. Hallelujah. I have a by faith. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter. Chapter 11, verse number 1. How many is ready for a miracle? Who needs a miracle in their finances? Okay, good. Because I took my notes on this, and last night the Lord spoke to my heart, and he said, I'm going to bless the ones that are there today, and I'm going to bless them. Some of you might have to leave before this service is over. I know you have appointments and you have to drive a long way. I won't be offended if you have to go. But don't worry about me, I'm a nothing. I'll tell you what you might miss out on though. Hmm. Is, my, is our cell phone off? It's pretty good at going off by itself. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Verse number 1 says, Now faith. Look at verse 3, through faith. Look at verse 4, by faith. Look at that. This chapter covers faith coming and going. This chapter covers faith, amen, in the now. How many want some now faith? Some of you are going to get such a measure of now faith that it's even going to take care of you. <laughs> 40 days from now. I said it's going to take care of you 40 days from now. Somebody receive that. Receive that. You're in a miracle working service. To him that believeth all things are possible. Brother Butch, go to my car. Look in the back. And bring me a wooden sign that I have purchased for this meeting and bring it to me. How many want some now faith? Yes. Three services ago, two weeks ago. Is that right? One, two, three. That's right. Two weeks ago, three services ago, the Lord gave me a message of now faith. Easter, I found myself in a battle against some demons and I didn't conduct myself properly in the Easter service and we had a lot of folks in the service pastor's very honest I'm just down to earth and I suffered mental anguish for two days because I didn't handle last Sunday's service properly the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, three Sundays ago, I gave you a message on faith. And I wanted you to declare that faith message for three straight Sundays. And you got distracted and tried to take on a demonic force by yourself and fell flat on your face. And I fell on my face and prayed. Who in the world locks it? Only mama. Mama. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, praise the Lord. But anyway, after two days of praying, and I shared it with the Wednesday night Bible study, I found mercy from the Lord, and the Lord forgave me. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, what you tried to take on by yourself was a piece of cake for me if you'd only praised me. He said, last Sunday, if you would have turned and allowed that service to be all praise, instead of trying to take it on by yourself, you cannot take the demonic world on by yourself. If you're going to rebuke the devil, it better be in the name of the Lord. Come on now. A lot of people are trying to cast out devils uh, by themselves. And some of them might look like they're successful. But when they stand before the Lord, they're going to say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out devils in thy name? He'll say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. The Lord spoke to my heart and he said, you should talk to me. Now, and I'm going to tell you, I've been preaching over 40 years. And because I know that I'm a child of God, he chastises me when I'm wrong. He'll whip me when I'm wrong. 
How many knows that's a good sign? Yes. That means I'm a son. Yes. I'm not illegit. Right. Amen. How many knows that with God all things are possible? Yes. Just a few days ago, I saw this sign and I wanted it. It was the last one in Mount Vernon. And I saw this elderly man going into the same store, all stooped over with age, tired. He either had his granddaughter with him or his daughter, and uh, she looked healthy and strong and well-dressed. Anyway, when I found this, I carried this around the store with me until I checked out. And I was carrying it like this. And that old man that was all bent over looked at me because he was ahead of me at the register. And he tried to read it this way. And I thought, oh, he wants to see what the sign says. And when he couldn't read it this way and it was hurting him to look, the Lord spoke to me. He said, some people are wanting to hear what you've got to say, but they're hurting. They're having trouble bending. And that man finally looked at me and he couldn't speak. And he went real serious and pointing at it and I went, yeah. went you know some old people can get really <laughs> some young people too but some old people I mean they can really like that and I went oh and his daughter was busy paying and I went oh he straightened up and smiled and his daughter turned around and looked at me and she said, what's happening? What are you doing? Basically what she was saying is, what are you doing with that man? I didn't do nothing to that man. Before I paid for it, I held it up. And that old man straightened up and smiled and he went, hmm. He never spoke. I thought, that's my son. Somebody give the Lord a clap. Of yeah. With God, all things are possible. Yeah. Somebody finish it. With God, all things are possible. To who? Yeah. To him that believeth. Yeah. All things are possible. Yeah. It might be hard with man or woman, but with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about faith. With God, all things are possible. How many believe? It? Get a hold of it. Wrap your mind around it. Amen. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. I'm so glad I bought that sign. If nothing else, just for that, to see that man straighten up and smile. Never spoke a word to me. I don't even know if he could talk. He looked like somebody that was well stricken in age. Now that's King James. Up in years. Up in years. Listen to me carefully as your pastor speaks. I want to talk to you this morning about faith. And a few of the witnesses that are mentioned in chapter 11. How many's ever read chapter 11? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I wrote down, I feel the substance. Hallelujah. The kind of faith that I have has substance. Mm. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I feel the evidence this morning. I don't have to see anything. How many knows that we serve an invisible God? And the only thing that can see an invisible God is your faith. And it needs to be strong this morning. Look at chapter 11, verse number 27. Chapter 11, verse number 27. Talking about Moses. By faith he forsook Egypt. It means to leave bondage and sin. It means to leave the burden. 
chapter 11, verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. In other words, not fearing the authority of the world. Yes. Not fearing the God of this world. How many remember that Pharaoh was a God yes. with a little G? And if you didn't bow before Pharaoh, you were in trouble with the God of this world. But how many knows that Moses was not afraid of the God of Egypt or the God of this world? And when you're not afraid of the God of this world and all of his bondage, yes. when you're not afraid, get ready for your spiritual eyes to open. Because you are on the verge of seeing God. Amen? Look at the verse. For he endured. Oh, is there some endurance when you overcome the fear of the God of this world? Is there some endurance when you walk away from sin? Uh, it's in there. Comma. As seeing him who is invisible. Yes. Who is invisible? God. God is a spirit. God is invisible. Verse 27 says the only way I can see him is I've got to leave sin and wait. Yes. I've got to be full of courage, not fear. I've got to endure. And once I leave Egypt, and I'm not afraid of the enemy, and I have overcome because of his grace, then and then alone will the veil be lifted and you will see God. Yes. Come on. You will see God by faith. Oh, he remains invisible. Those around you won't see him, but your spirit will. You will. God will be more real to you than what you see. Yes. Woo! Yes. I said God will be more real than what you see. Yes, Amen. Yes. Once you leave Egypt, yes. once you over, overcome the fear of the God of this world, once you endure... That means that sin found no place in you. Then, according to verse 27, you will see him that's invisible. How many knows that to every man is given a measure of faith? There are some believers that have faith, but still have trouble with the move of God. There were disciples that had trouble with the resurrection of Jesus. Even though 10 of them told him that he was alive. He said, I'll not believe till I put my hand in the nail print and thrust my hand into his side. I'll not believe. I've got to see for myself. There are some folks. The Lord spoke to my heart. He said, get ready. I'm going to sing you some folks that have to see for themselves. Don't let them phase you. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. He said, I'll manifest myself to whomsoever I choose. I will be gracious and merciful to whomsoever I choose. Don't you pick and choose. I'll pick. I'll pick. I'll choose. Look. Look at verse number two. For by it the elders obtained a good report. In other words, they won. They won a good report. Because of the now faith. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Did you know that God is going to work in our midst? And we're going to see that work. But you'll never, you'll never see the hand that did it. You'll never see the one that spoke it. He's invisible. But you will see the result of his work. Through faith. Sarah believed through faith. Abel, be, Abel believed by faith. There's a difference between through and by. 
Come on, somebody. Look, look at uh, verse number four. By faith, Abel. Somebody say, by faith. by faith. Some of you have some by faith. Now, I'm going to expound on that a little bit. I don't know what time it is. I'm almost not caring. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wouldn't have brought it up if I were, you know. That's why I said I almost don't care. I want you to give me 15 minutes. Okay. Thank you, Ivan. <laughs> Ivan's paying attention. Yes. Yes. Amen. God's good, isn't he? Yes. I don't know why, but the Lord told me to emphasize by. So I went to the dictionary. And when I looked up the word by, B-Y, it was long. Sometimes the littlest words have the most. Come on now. So I wrote them all down. By. Webster Dictionary said, the college dictionary that I had, into the vicinity of and beyond. Remind me of my little grandson. Almost. When he had a toy. I forget how he worded it. Say it again. Oh, and beyond. <laughs> I kind of like that toy. Yeah. Amen. The by faith will take you into the vicinity. Yes. And beyond. Yes. Amen. The by faith will take you through the door. Yes. The by faith will usher you in. Yes. Through an agency. Webster. Now, when I had the college dictionary and I was looking at the by faith, it said this particular uh, word by is accompanied by some kind of agency that will lead you into everything that's called holy. I thought, is this Webster? Or is this my Bible dictionary? And it was like the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, you can name the agency. Some people don't really get a job until they first connect with a job service, which is known as a agency. And some of you won't really come into what you need from the Lord until you first of all get hooked up with the agent. You fill in the blank. Yes. Who would you like? Who would you like for your agent to be? Yes. Taking you into the presence of God. Yes. How many would like an agency that has no trouble getting you in? Yes. Because they've already been there. Yes. Some of you are learning something about this by faith. You can't have real good by faith until you first hooked up with the agency that's connected with the by faith. Why the agency? The agent knows him better than you. You don't even know how to ask. You don't even know how to receive. You don't even know how to pray. The Holy Ghost knows how. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Some of you are so long in receiving some of the things that you need. You need an agency. Yeah. You need an agent. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you are trying to do it all on your own. You're like Cain. You've got it all worked out yourself. you got your religion. You see others passing you by and you're mad because they pass you by. You can't even stand your brother. Blood, kin, you can't even stand them because they've already arrived. They've already been accepted. Woo, feel the anointing. By faith is called, and this is in the dictionary, with the witness 
or sanction of. Real by faith will always demand a witness. You know how I know a lot of times when it's God, I'll get confirmation. I'll get a witness. By faith demands a witness. My spirit will bear witness with his spirit. Amen. Somebody might walk in filled with the spirit. They might say something or sing something. And it will bear witness with me. And I'll know that I'm on the right page. By faith will always demand a witness. Now at the very end, I told you there was a long definition on the word by. And some of you men will appreciate this and maybe some of you women. The word by, B-Y, is used in mathematics. But it is used first. It is a function word in multiplication and measurements. Seven by ten. The word by at the very beginning of the dictionary said, it takes care of every side. I like faith like that. That takes care of my right, left, front, and back. It's already got it all measured out. But I like the first mathematical definition of by. Its first job is to multiply. Look at Abel. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. No S. When I read Genesis about Abel giving God a gift, he only gave God one gift. And yet when I read it in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the word declares that his one-time gift Turn into gifts. Multiplied. Yes. Look at verse 4. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which he obtained witness. How many knows that the by faith requires a witness? That he was righteous. How many would like a witness from God that you're in the right place? That you're about to receive the right thing. God testifying of his gifts with an S. He only gave one gift and got in trouble because of another brother who didn't like it. And the other brother killed him before he could give God anything more. Come on. His one time gift. Because it was given to God. What did Jesus do with five loaves and two fish? Did he multiply it? Do you think just because righteous Abel was killed. Before he could give to God again. That his giving was finished. His giving was not finished. Because the Bible says at the end, oh, gifts, God testifying of his gifts. And by it, it singular, singular, catch it. He being dead yet speaketh. I said, Holy Spirit, help me. And the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, what did he give God? I said, a lamb. With the fat. He said how did he give it to him? He butchered it. It bled. He burnt it. On the altar. The fat sizzled. And the meat was cooked. The blood was shed. I said Lord he gave you one gift. But it's still talking. He said he was killed. Because of what he gave me. And I told his murdering brother, 
that I still hear Abel's blood speaking to me from the ground. If righteous Abel had not shed the blood of a lamb, that blood that was shed took part with his own. For when the blood is shed, I was preaching in Johnstown, Ohio once. And this man came in, Mr. Liggett. And I looked at him funny. Because when the altar call was given, he was on my left. And we, we had a railing. And I passed her there six years to the day. And I was watching him pray. The Bible said watch and pray. The altar was filled. He was down on his knees. He was a farmer. And he had only been to the church twice. But he hit the altar. And he was reaching down on the carpet and going like this and 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 like this. And when the service was over, I made a beeline straight to Mr. Liggett. I said, Mr. Liggett, what were you doing in the altar to the carpet? He said, I didn't see the carpet. I saw the blood. He said, I was at the foot of the cross. And he said, I needed the blood. And I was scooping it up. And I was applying it to my mind. And to my body. And to my spirit. And he stood up and he said, I'm saved. Yeah. Woo, glory. I'm telling you a true story. It's the blood. When righteous Abel offered his gift and it was accepted by God and God gave witness that he was righteous. In other words, he was right. You see, Abel was saying, I am saying in essence, I need you. I need the blood. I need you. I need forgiveness of sin. Cain was worshiping God without a need. He didn't need God's forgiveness. He was full of self-will. He offered God vegetables and fruit. And the Lord rejected it. The Lord had no respect to it. If you were really to study the Hebrew, the thing that is different between Cain and Abel is the fire. In Hebrew, in Hebrew, vegetables don't burn well. Neither do grapes or apples. But boy, when you offer a lamb, the fat will talk. It'll sizzle and pop. My wife, you ask her, she's got an instrument like a screen. And she'll put it right over the frying pan until it's done. Because she's not going to get splattered. How many knows it's the blood? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. By faith. By faith. Yes. Oh, I could go on down the line and talk about Enoch, who was translated, who did not see death, but he saw God. By faith, Enoch was translated. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 7, by faith, Noah. Mm, verse 8, by faith, Abraham. Mm, hallelujah. Sarah's different. Through faith, Sarah. You know what Sarah did? Sister Brenda will remember this. I was preaching in Johnstown, Ohio. Sarah judged God. And it's okay, you can. When the righteous judge God, yes. not the wicked, there's a difference. How did she judge him? She judged him faithful. Yes. She came to the conclusion, she went to court. Well, if he could tell me what I'm thinking, and he knows that I was laughing on the inside and didn't let it on the outside. I think he knows what he's talking about. I think I'm going to have a baby. And I'm going to call it laughter. 
Isaac means laughter. Most women giving birth to a baby moan and groan. She was laughing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, look, look at the verse there. If you will with me about Sarah, verse 11. Oh, I like that, 11, 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength. How many would like to receive some strength? Yes. To conceive seed. Ah, oh, how many remember that the worlds were framed by the word of God? Yes. How did she frame the seed? When the seed wickedly came into her, God honored her through faith and produced an egg. And the egg received the sperm and the sperm went inside the egg and framed it. Framed it. You can't make nothing unless it's been framed. Frame it out first. Does it not say that in verse 3? Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Yes. Through faith the worlds were framed through the word of God. She through the word of God. Everybody was by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. And you get to the first woman. Through faith. She had to go through something. Come on somebody. Is this good? Through faith, when that seed entered into her womb, her egg framed it. That seed penetrated it and brought forth a laughing baby. Isaac, laughter, the child of promise. Oh, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I know I need to wind down. But I'm enjoying this. Amen. Oh, I love verse 12. Therefore sprang. Somebody say sprang. Some of you are as good as dead. And some of you are walking. And a lot of you is already dead. Get ready for some springing. Get ready for some resurrection. Talking about... Abraham therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. That's Abraham. If you ever studied that all the way out. Some people says nearly dead. Another translation said he was a walking dead man. In other words, there was no male functioning in him. He was already dead. He couldn't produce children anymore how many knows that god can take a dead thing yes. well that's a good easter message right there yes. god can take a dead thing and give it life yes. and she sarah through faith received strength to receive the seed yes. the faith produced the egg the faith produced the seed yes. and it brought forth laughter it brought forth life. All the witness of all of these people. And it goes on. It talks about so many in this chapter. Joseph. By faith, Joseph. By faith, Moses. Mm -mm -mm. Isn't it a good chapter? Now, pastor wants to share something with you. In closing, Jesus needed the cloud. Jesus needed a witness. Because while he was in his earthly ministry, he was trying to share with those that were closest with him his death, burial, and resurrection, and they didn't want to hear it. Sometimes they would shake Jesus and say, I'll have none of it. And Jesus would get angry and look at him and say, get thee behind me, Satan. And sometimes he would tell them that he would be delivered into the hands of sinners and be crucified. And the disciples did not understand what he was saying. 
So when his disciples could not receive or understand about his crucifixion, Jesus had no witness. So the Bible says that Jesus took Peter, James, and John to a high mountain and began to be transfigured. And God sent two witnesses, one Moses and one Elijah. And when Peter, James, and John woke up, they noticed that Moses and Elijah were talking to Jesus about his death. They were the only ones that could talk to him about it because they believed it. None of the apostles wanted to believe it, so they didn't want to hear it and they didn't want to talk about it. Some people don't want to hear or talk about what you know. They're not where you're at. So you still need encouragement and you still need a witness. The Bible said that Moses and Elijah talked to Jesus. And when Peter woke up, he said, Ooh, it's good to be here because he was afraid and didn't know what to say. Let me build a tabernacle, one for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was suggesting three building programs, one will do you in. Can I get a witness? One building program will do you in. Can you imagine him taking on three building programs? Going to call this building Moses, going to call this building Elijah, going to call this building Jesus. My, I get to go to church three times in one day. He certainly didn't know what to say, did he? There's a lot of people that get all excited and they don't know what to say. They do know that Moses and Elijah were talking to Jesus about his death. And Jesus needed that. And when Peter spoke up and was out of order... Because he was afraid and didn't know what to say. A cloud came. And they found themselves in the cloud. God knows what to say. You've been in them services where they don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. And you're walking in the cloud. You're walking in the anointing. And you know what to do. But half of them don't know what they're doing. That's good preaching. Give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. A cloud overshadowed them and there was a voice in the cloud and said, this is my beloved son in whom this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. I almost said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That was at the baptism on the mountain. It said, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Since Peter was talking out of order, let's get back in line again. Let's hear what God has to say. I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, I would like to camp here a little while. I'm not going to build a house for Moses or Elijah or Jesus, but I'd like to camp here for a little while. I'd like to ask you, if you don't mind, what in the world could Moses say? And what in the world could Elijah say to be a witness and encouragement to the Lord? And the Lord took me to the word. He said, Moses could have easily have said this, because experience can talk. Moses could say to the Lord, you don't have a thing to worry about. I didn't have nobody to bury me but God. And the devil still doesn't know where my grave is. He said, angels were in charge of my death. Satan tried to come to my funeral, Jesus, but Michael showed up. Do you think Moses could have encouraged the Lord with that? Oh, it don't say that. But why not? Then I could hear Elijah speak up. Jesus, this is a piece of cake. I, you know what? If I get a witness, I don't want somebody coming to me and say, Well, don't you know you're going to die? You're going to suffer. Oh, it's going to be bad. I would rather to have Elijah come up to me and say, Jesus, heads up. They're still looking for me. He said, God translated me from this life to the next. And they couldn't believe it and sent a search party out and looked for me for three days. 
what are you going to do in three? <laughs> Elijah could have easily said to Jesus, and this is a good witness, I've been gone a long time, and I haven't showed up on planet Earth until now. And I'd like to tell you, everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I can hear Moses talking to him. You don't have a thing to worry about. Satan hasn't been able to find me for 1,500 years. Michael fought him and God buried me. And I just thought I would come back from the grave to let you know you are too. Yeah. Would you like to have two witnesses like that? If you really study real hard, he didn't have to bring it up to the disciples no more. Who needs witnesses from people that don't want to hear and don't want to believe? I get tired of trying to say something to somebody that's not believing. I'll move on. Won't you? Oh, I got a feeling. I got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. We're going to receive an offering. A faith offering. We're going to bless Evangelist Jill this morning. And she wants to meet with some of you after the service. But we're going to receive an offering this morning. For Evangelist Jill Street, your gift is a gift of faith. Your gift will keep on talking. Your gift can turn into gifts. The Lord's laid it on my heart to do something different. Sister Betty, you are to pray out loud over everyone that gives because you know something about giving you really do you took my wife and I this week and bought us a wonderful supper and it was delicious last year you took us out and bought me a wonderful supper the Lord says, you know something about giving. Dreamt that at the church during the service, Betty Kent was standing there. Come here, Sister Betty. Because I didn't know I was going to use these notes to record my sermon. Sister Betty Kent standing right there. Praying for people who wanted to tithe and give special offerings at church. As people were bringing their tithes and offerings forward, she was praying for them. We were in the service giving the offerings, and the next thing I know, the next thing I knew, we were sitting at a table in the back room, and Butch was counting the money that came in, and he was amazed at how much money came in and was praying in tongues. That's not new. Amen. The offering was so blessed, you were praying in tongues. I wrote a check for $100 above my tithes as an offering, and Betty prayed for me over it. We were sitting there at the table, and Betty leaned into me and prayed for a double blessing. I remember saying that this 100 was going to cut our budget real close, but I wanted to give it. The Lord spoke to my heart as I was writing my sermon on this. That she is going to pray a double blessing on your giving. When I read what Abel gave, his offering turned into gifts. It was multiplied. And it was accepted by God. Some have already given their tithes and their offering to the local church. But to those that are willing to, to, to those that are willing to believe 
that God can bless the offering. Sister Betty will pray for you. When you turn the offering loose, let her pray a double portion. Who will be first? Who will be first? Yes. 